and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show, the show where we bring you the action in the broader markets. And it's been quite a choppy week here. Let's take a look at what we are going to be uh, covering here today. First up, as usual, we're going to take a look at the broader markets, see where we closed the week, get a good feel for what position we're in. Of course, this is all about helping prepare you not only for next week, but beyond. So we're going to take a look at those markets, look beyond the curtains into the markets and see really what took place last week. I'm sure a lot of you are well aware uh, you're portfolios may have taken a dip depending on on your focus. But uh, also, I'm going to share with you some dividend aristocrat stocks. And these are stocks, for those not familiar, that uh, for at least 25 years in a row, they have increased their dividend. So in the current market environment, I went over those 40, 37 stocks and cherry pick some names. And this would be with an eye toward counterbalancing those areas, those riskier areas that are under distribution. Also creating a watch list during this period when the markets are seeing what I'm calling heavy selling, you will want to put together a watch list. I'll share with you tips for that so that when the markets do turn constructive again, you are well positioned to take advantage of that. Also, pockets of strength in a difficult market environment. There, are, Yes, they are out there. I will share them with you as well as individual stocks. So let's take a look at some of the news last week that drove market action. We did see the S&P 500 break key support. I'll review that. But Fed Chair Powell did come out earlier in the week and he was speaking to the Senate and he made it very clear his intent to fight inflation. He actually changed the terminology so that transitory inflation was no longer a thing. He felt that it is here and it will stay with us well into the beginning of next year. And that, of course, sent ripples through the market, not what um, investors want to hear. We will get more into that as we get through uh, our show today. Also, um, Omicron, there are cases now in 38 countries. So we are continuing to see, unfortunately, expansion, if you will, as it relates to cases being uncovered. There is still uncertainty relating to the severity of the, this new variant. Uh, so a lot of uncertainty surrounding this new COVID uh, variant. And that, of course, is causing uncertainty and not very good for the markets. We did see consumer confidence sink to a nine-month low. A lot of that is inflation fear related and then also COVID related. Uh, Delta, of course, this, oh, this Omicron news was a little too new for consumer confidence, but that shook a number of retail areas uh, that did get hit this week in addition to other news that also hit the consumer space. A majority of the sectors are now below their 50-day moving average. For me, that is that line in the sand that's going to delineate strength versus weakness. And it certainly is not what you want to see if you are looking to uh, increase or gain uh, in this market. Unemployment rate plunged to a 22-month low today. That actually also shook investors' confidence as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the markets. And I'm sharing with you a daily price chart of the S&P 500. And we can see midweek here, we did get that break below this red 50-day simple moving average. And again, I mentioned that this particular simple moving average from my work, if we do break below that, it is very, uh, can be foretelling in the sense of further downside. Also, you're going to want to look at your outside momentum indicators in conjunction with this break. So we did see the RSI. This is a relative strength indicator turning negative and remaining negative for the remainder of the week. The stochastics, a faster moving momentum indicator, but on this daily chart down here in negative territory, super high volume on that Wednesday sell-off, also indicative of future 
downside possibilities being quite high. So we really only need to go back to this late September period, a very similar dynamic when at that time the S&P broke below this 50-day simple moving average. The reason here was uh, actually this was all about the Delta variant and the spread there as well as rising interest rates. So this is where historical precedent can really serve you well as it relates to what to be on the lookout for, for a resumption of an uptrend. And this can be used for individual stocks as well. But from my work, it's going to be all about the broader markets. Do you have that positive wind behind your sales, so to speak. So you are going to want to see the S&P 500 break back above these simple moving averages to gain uh, a more constructive outlook. Uh, I am going to get a lot more into this with my weekly MEM Edge report because there's a lot more in the near term uh, that I'm anticipating before we see that turn. But for general purposes, uh, this kind of historical precedent can be really quite helpful as far as helping you gauge what to be on the lookout for. For instance, the stochastics back here turned positive late September, but this index did not break above the averages, so it did fail. So that kind of precedent. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at those 11 sectors behind the S&P 500 and see where we stand this week. I do like to put this RSI relative strength indicator. We're looking at a two-month daily price chart of the 11 sectors. I have gone ahead and sorted it by RSI, and we want to see where that relative strength is currently in the markets. And take a look, utilities, uh, REITs, real estate stocks, uh, good old technology. I'm going to dig more into this as, as it relates to why the relative strength, where that is. And this is going to be all about formulating that watch list. But take a look, staples, up here in the forefront. So clear cut defensiveness as it relates to investors sentiment. We can see these more defensive sectors moving up to the forefront as riskier assets are uh, certainly riskier sectors within the markets are continuing to deteriorate led by internet related stocks. This is communication services that had already been in a downtrend. Uh, Netflix is a heavy weighting here. That was down 10% and Facebook was down eight and a half. So you had heavyweights, but also individual stocks in these internet related areas and uh, other areas also faltering that we'll get into as we move on. Because what I want to do from here is take us further behind the scenes. Let's take a look at some of those sub industry grouping, some, some of those really relevant indicators and areas that are going to help make sense, if you will, of this market. So I've gone ahead again, this two month daily price chart, each of the broader market indices are represented here. I also have semiconductors, banks, interest rates, uh, volatility index, and so on. So in descending order, again, I'm going to go ahead and quickly update this. And first up, we can see the volatility index. The VIX has spiked. It got up as high as 35 today. And from my work, really anything up above 1822, that's going to bring out the nerves, if you will. And that would be take us back certainly to a week ago. But we have spiked higher. Again, this is where historical precedent can be really quite helpful when you are looking at whether it is the VIX or other indicators. So uh, volatility index, for those not familiar, it is also called the fear uh, index because the higher it is, it indicates uh, higher fear as it relates to investor sentiment. So what I did want to point out to you here on the VIX is that we did get in up above this 70 level, indicating an overbought, if you will, condition. But take a look at this MACD. It's really up here in the upper reaches of its potential range. Simply uh, stated, the volatility index, this kind of spike indicates that we can next week expect a, uh, because of oversold conditions, we may see a bounce. But uh, 
be aware, take a look at that broader market. That's what you're going to want to pay attention to before you get uh, excited or, or potentially pulled back in. So from here, I did want to share with you some of these other areas that held up well. And I mentioned technology. So the broader market, the S&P down 1.9%, the NASDAQ down 3.3%, but tech was mostly flat. And here's one of the reasons. There are others. I'm going to get into some stocks that uh, you, I believe, should be aware of, again, from that watch list standpoint. But here we are with semiconductor stocks. Semiconductors were flat for the week as well, but a lot of, in the way of volatility, but very much in line with the broader market volatility. The RSI remains positive for semiconductors. We can see this MACD. Now, this is very much a signal uh, as it relates to near-term momentum. So this black line down through the red is very simply indicating that this near-term uptrend that we were seeing in semiconductors has since uh, declined as far as that upside momentum. We are still in positive territory, however. And quite frankly, this in this look, if you will, is what you will see among a lot of the underlying higher growth names where that MACD really had not a whole lot in the way of further upside. There was quite a bit of exuberance surrounding these names. So at the very least, a pullback uh, was in line. So let's go back and take a look at some of these other sub industry groupings. And we can take a look at bank stocks. KRE is the regional banking index. And we can see this pretty significant downdraft here. Uh, I'm going to share with you in a minute interest rates. We are seeing an interesting counter response, if you will, because what I failed to mention in the beginning was with Powell's uh, vow to fight inflation, he is and uh, anticipating that the Federal Reserve will reduce their bond buying. And normally, reduced bond buying will increase interest rates and not so. Today, we saw this is the yield on the 10-year Treasury. It dropped 7% today. And a lot of that having to do with some of the economics, certainly the employment numbers out today. So when these rates drop, of course, bank stocks are not going to benefit, and we did see a significant decline there as well. So let's take a look at one other area that I cover every week because certainly when it's going up, it's near and dear to my heart. Uh, this is semiconductor stocks, lots of high growth names in here. I began removing semiconductor stocks actually a uh, maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago, as they started to stall and then begin to break down. Subsequently, we've seen a very pronounced drop. We've seen software stocks fall in the past, whether it's inflation related, interest rate related, but certainly more orderly. Uh, actually, looking back here, we are seeing signs similar to February. I'm going to go back and take a look at TNX and show you where interest rates were back during this period, but uh, maybe more similar to this period. And again, use that historical precedent to know uh, when to potentially get back in because lots of high growth names in there with potential future growth outlook still remaining quite high. So quick peek here at TNX. This is the yield on the 10-year. Uh, take a look. It was on the rise back here in February. So this is when we saw uh, software stocks decline. Uh, I, again, get more into this in my report as to the dynamics, but interesting uh, period that we're in now as it relates to growth stocks relative to declining interest rates. So let's go ahead from here. What I do want to share with you, uh, we did take a look at the broader market indices and certainly some of these other sub-industry groupings. I did want to share with you the underlying stocks in the Dow Jones Industrial Index. And that is because this particular index did hold up relatively well. It was still down for the week, 
but if we look at it relative to the other broader market indices, we can see. But actually, before we do that, I am going to take one minute here because I would be remiss to not share with you the continued deterioration in small cap stocks. They were down another four plus percent this week, just really super high volume. Small cap stocks do well when the investor community has confidence in the markets. And this particular, uh, this is a real sign of risk off sentiment when we see these small cap stocks and just really getting clobbered, huge volume characteristics. So I did want to share that with you. I am going to take a brief break. When we get back, we'll go ahead and take a look at those Dow components, the aristocrat dividend stocks and pockets of strength. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Mary Ellen McGonigal, author of the MEM Edge Report. In my bi-weekly report, I highlight top growth stocks as they enter buy zones, and I educate subscribers on why that stock is attractive both technically and fundamentally. In addition, you'll be alerted to when it's time to exit that stock based on negative technical action. And this bi-weekly report gives you confidence by providing fundamental insights into why an area of the market is strong and which companies within that strong area have the best growth profiles that will help propel that stock higher. Subscribers to the MEM Edge report are benefiting from my expertise in uncovering top performing growth stocks. Subscribe now to take advantage of my special trial offer. And we are back. As mentioned, going to take a quick peek here at the Dow components. A couple of names here worth noting. And you can do this very easily in stockcharts.com. Create a list. And in this case, I simply input the 30 names that are comprised of uh, within the Dow. And then go ahead and take ask for this candle glance view. Again, I've Put that RSI indicator up here and just take a quick look here at some of the names that are holding up well, certainly relative to an otherwise uh, not healthy market. So we can see up here in the forefront, Home Depot, and this is a theme. So as you may know, throughout the week, I'm constantly going through charts, screening, looking for where those pockets of strength may be appearing. And certainly this week, home builders was one area as interest rates uh, remain low and we saw them drop even further this week. But Home Depot is a company, of course, that does uh, provide home improvement, but also building products, a big part of their revenue source is from professional builders. And they did come out earlier this year and cite the fact that they have really their own system as it relates to delivery. So their supply, supply chain issues are not a relevant factor. So we can see this gap up here. This was in response to strong earnings and the stock continues to remain quite constructive. Uh, Procter & Gamble, I was gonna wait, but I have other names for that aristocrat dividend space, but this is PG is the ticker symbol. And the stock has a 2.3% yield, and the company has been able to increase prices. This is why a lot of these consumer, um, oh my goodness, I'm drawing a blank, but it is the reason that a lot of these defensive areas in uh, the consumer space are holding up well, because they've been able to increase pricing because of increased supply and they are not getting a lot in the way of pushback because of course, a lot of these products are needed uh, regardless of increased pricing. Take a look here at Apple and it is it was actually up for the week, up 2%. So lots of news surrounding the company. There's anticipation of super high growth uh, that's being leaked, if you will, as it relates to the holiday season. But there are other fundamental reasons that Apple is holding up well. There is thinking among analysts that they have enough in the way of cash flow and other strength that will help them withstand uh, declines elsewhere. So we can see that it's holding up really quite remarkably well. And then one other name that I did want to point out to you while we were here, I 
did not show you energy, but energy stocks and actually the price of oil dropped super dramatically. But we are seeing uh, select uh, oil related stocks that are holding up well. This is Chevron CVX. And this is when I talk about that watch list. You want to be aware of these companies that are withstanding downward pressure elsewhere. Now, of course, with these oil stocks, it's not just going to be the market. You're going to want to pay attention to other dynamics. They're very tied into OPEC and oil pricing and so forth. But generally speaking, the stock is holding up well relative to uh, weakness elsewhere. And then, of course, just a quick glance, you want to be aware of where the super distribution is coming in. Make sure that you are not overweight or in that particular area. We can see Visa. This is American Express. They are continuing to get clobbered here. So that's one area uh, would not be even considering bottom fishing there. Uh, this is a prime software company. CRM Salesforce came out with earnings and gapped down tremendous volume. Worth noting, there was uh, DocuSign is another name down, I believe, 42% today on earnings. And so that's really dragging down those consumer or computer software stocks even further. So let's go ahead and move on because what I want to do from here is take a look at some of those other aristocrat related stocks. This is all about those that want to, or uh, for years I worked with professional money managers that had to be mostly invested. Uh, we're taking a look here at Pepsi, PEP -E is the ticker symbol, and a nice day today of two and a half percent. The company, it's another case where they came out actually in October and talked about price increases. And again, not much in the way of pullback. Their product line is all about snacks and beverages. Still a big uh, point as far as consumers increase consumption in that area. And we can see Pepsi pulled back right to this upward trending 50 day simple moving average. Today's move pushed it back into a bullish position above these shorter term moving averages. It also pushed the RSI into positive territory. Next up, and it's not needed at this point, but it would be a nice uh, third leg, if you will, if this black line came up through the red, indicating that the near-term momentum has shifted upward. I believe I mentioned 2.6% uh, in the way of yield. Let's take a look. And Consumer Staple is the name I was trying to think of earlier. And the staple stocks, here's another one, McCormick, MKC. They're all about spices and condiments. And despite the reopening of the U.S., a lot of people are still remaining home. They're utilizing their kitchens instead of eating out. So we can see MKC had this nice downtrend reversal. It's broken back above first the 50, then that 200 day simple moving average. And we are getting nice volume characteristics on this upside move, momentum indicators in positive territory. And uh, this particular stock does offer a 1.7% yield. Next up, we're going to be looking at an auto replacement stock, Genuine Parts, GPC. Now, this name still has work to do, but it did undercut its 50-day simple moving average. And certainly, when you look at it relative to the broader markets that have suffered into the close for the week, it is coming under some accumulation. So from here, I will want to see a break back above this 10 and 21 day simple moving average. I'll want that RSI to turn positive as well as the MACD. That would be ideal. But a lot of times when looking for stocks, certainly from my watch list, I want to see a company that it has the propensity or the ability to be in a nice sustained uptrend, most notably due to growth, and GPC does have a nice growth prospects. So let's move on. A couple of other names that are dividend providers that are being viewed as less risky and are holding in quite well. This is GWW, and we can see that the RSI pulled right back to this 50-day moving average and has bounced back up. They do provide building products. So it is a play on that strength that we're seeing in home builders. And also the stock undercut the 21 day, but closed the week above the 10 day. And that's quite constructive. Another watch list stock for those that aren't inclined to uh, 
jump in at this point in time. So let's take a look at ADP. This is a back office software company. And I did want to share with you that the companies I've been sharing so far have been what are called dividend aristocrats in some cases with, uh, for instance, Procter & Gamble for 64 years in a row, they have increased their dividend. And that is what gets them into this elite group. Uh, ADP, I believe it's 48 years. But let's take a look at the chart here. Again, I like the concept here. It's had strong upside momentum due to growth also back historically and we can see that the stock has dropped in line with the markets not quite as much outside momentum indicators still in positive territory and i will want to see it break above those shorter term simple moving averages uh, one other name quickly because we looked at home depot earlier i would be remiss not to mention lowe's holding in remarkably well and again uh, all about uncovering that outside strength uh, or the current strength relative to the broader markets. And the primary reason there is when the market pressures are lifted, those names that have withstood the downward pressure are in a better position to outperform once the markets turn positive. McDonald's, a little bit dicey here, but I did want to point it out to you. Estimates this year are for 56% earnings growth. They came out with earnings in uh, actually late November, and it was 30, uh, let's take a look, it, actually 2.2% on the yield is what I did want to point out. And it's finding support here at this 50 day. It's not going to be my first pick, but I certainly did want to share that with you. As for pockets of strength, these last two names are going to be within areas that are defensive FRT. This is a REIT stock. And we can see that it too undercut that 50 is potentially trading back up 3.4% yield and they do traffic in retail properties. And then I did want to share with you a, um, a stock. Uh, this is Nextera Energy. So it's in the utility space and utilities have been outperforming as mentioned in the face of the aversion to risk. So we can see it's in a nice uptrend. Uh, Nextera is owned by Warren Buffett. It's a clean energy company focused mostly in Florida, but we can see outside momentum indicators are positive here. Nice 1.8% yielder. So from here, I did want to talk about other areas. I mentioned to you that there's been strength in technology. We looked at semiconductors. Let's take a look at some other individual stocks that are well known, that are holding up well, and again, uh, all about keeping that watch list vibrant. So this is Dell Technologies, and the company has seen PC sales rising as offices reopening. Now, whether this new Delta, uh, this new variant will put a halt to that, but certainly the sales have been booked, if you will. Dell has seen a nice pickup and we can see the stock is poised to break out of this nice six-week base. Just another point or two and we're we will have done that. The RSI is above 50, trending upward. And take a look, MACD, black line up through the red, giving you that nice constructive uh, view. So depending on your thoughts as, as it relates to the markets and elsewhere, this is a great looking name. Another one that is in the same space, and that is HPQ. I talked about this stock. I, I would be wondering if you would remember, but I did uncover this stock back here in October as it reversed its downtrend. This was in the face of strong earnings, management speaking glowingly of the future. And then subsequent to that, we've seen this gap up and uptrend. You really would not know what was going on elsewhere as far as distribution. Uh, but the company is also citing high PC sales and that is in turn getting analysts quite excited. I think I have named uh, time for one more tech stock that is really holding in well. Again, that watch list. This is Seagate Technologies, STX, big gap up here on earnings, 153% year over year growth, finding support at these moving averages and generally outperforming. So I will leave it at that. For those of you that want more insight into where we are currently in the markets, you want to be alerted to when we turn constructive and where you should put your money to work. Do trial my MEM Edge report, super special offer in the link below. And until next time, 
Have a great weekend. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.